Mr. Ramos. I want to give you the floor, a little introduction, who you are, our relationship with each other. And then if you could dive into how do we operate in loss and what are the strategies? Where is the place? Is it is it in the mind spiritually or is there a physical place I can go to with the father to, you know, get through this, right? And and keep being an impact and keep growing from there. Floor is yours. Thank you, Denzel, and all of you who have joined us tonight. Um, Minor Ramos here. And look, I, I get the tough topic. I, I have to be the one to deliver, you know, the, the tough message. But before I do that, let me let me do this. Um, you guys were all talking about you were from Puerto Rico and I lighten up the mood a little bit before I get into it. So I was orig- I was born in Guatemala. Uh, my wife is Puerto Rican. We have four kids. So I say that my kids are Puerto Rican. So write that one down. All right. <laughs> I love it. I know. Courtney, it's but they, I get blamed for that all the time. They tell me that all the time. So um, I just wanted to lighten up the mood a little bit because what we're going to be talking about is really important. Uh, and it's like, like, you know, how do we get into this topic? Because we don't want to talk about this. Um, so, you know, I, I uh, Denzel's 20, you know, I, I, you know, half my age. And uh, when I met uh, Denzel was because I wanted to hear more about infinite banking. So made, you know, drove down to South Florida. I live in Central Florida. I drove down to South Florida, um, met him for his birthday. And, uh, you know, we, we, we basically started, you know, the friendship and relationship from that. But I didn't know is that a lot of the, the topics and, you know, the kingdom authority, all of those things would all just kind of come into play and, and, and really uh, play out in uh, 2021. I noticed there's a lot of you here that are not and haven't been in some of the other gatherings. So um, let me just give a two minute explanation of, you know, what, what changed in 2021. And then I'll talk a little bit about strategy and I'll talk a little bit about what I do. Okay. Um, So stick with me for a minute. You know, let me, you know, I know this is a tough conversation, but let's get through it together. Um, Everything for, for me, you know, my four kids, you know, we're very, very close family. We we do everything together. Uh, But in 2021 in August, um, I got sick. Uh, went to the hospital. Uh, my daughter also went to the hospital. Um, we were, you know, we would, you know, text and and FaceTime, you know, for 10 days in the hospital. And then um, one day before I was released on day 12, she was put on a ventilator. And so when I was released, it was really the the, the toughest part of anything that I've ever had to deal with. Just knowing that I came out of that hospital and, and she you know, her situation didn't change. Um, for the next four months, the Ramos family went on a, the most aggressive rescue mission, giving, I'm telling you, our lives were turned upside down. How sold, moved from here to Philadelphia. Um, uh, you know, all this stuff that was going on and, and her, the focal point was for her mom and myself. We were, my wife and I, we're in that hospital room with her every single day. We prayed, the community came together. And this is where I'd like to put a little illustration. Some people always ask me, well, how did you get through it? Well, the way that we got through it is that we did more of what we've always done. And that was, we leaned on our heavenly father. We you know, drove through this by faith. And the model that we developed was we're gonna believe, we're gonna trust, and we're going to obey. So that was part of the journey. That was part of what we, we had to go through. What I didn't know, um, December 12th um, was the day that we saw God's glory. That we, 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 we call it the day of glory because we, we observed after going through very deep months and days of just heartache and just very difficult to deal with we noticed a, a kind of a move, a transformation. Um, when she went to be with our Heavenly Father on December 12th of 2021, even though we had to li- live in the dark moments of life, we also experienced unimaginable like peace that only God can give us. And so what, what happened after that is that I started sharing my story with a lot of people and I started to realize, man, this is a lot more common than I thought. I mean, every time I talk about this subject, 
somebody comes up to me and they tell me we went through this and we went through that and we went through that and certain that, you know, people, people right now are hurting in so many different ways. The major ones that I'm hearing, aside from the health issues that happen, you know, naturally, um, the, 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 the concern out there right now is, you know, kids on drugs and then they overdose. I think um, my my wife was telling me that uh, some uh, teenage kids, you know, overdose on on uh, on on these like CBD, you know, gummy, you know, things. And it's just crazy to think if some of them do it because they have an issue. The second kind of loss is what, you know, everybody, everybody goes through different kinds of losses. But, you know, these these layoffs with tech and with mortgages and all that stuff, you know, I've heard in the last in 2008. There were a lot of people that took their own lives because they just didn't know how to get through this. So the the question then that Denzel was asking is like, well, how do we move through that uh, personally and then and then financially? So those are the the two ways that I would I would address. And then I would just tell you that personally, I have no idea how anyone anyone at all could go through something like this without leaning on a higher power. For me, it's my heavenly Father, you know, God you know, Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I mean, everybody, you know, I understand everybody thinks differently and, but this is where I'm at. And so when people ask me, this is how we got through it, but whatever that belief is for you, you'll have to lean on that because there's no other way other than medication to go through it. And by God's grace, um, you know, we, we didn't have to go through, through the, through the medication process. So we would have been in the right if we needed to be in, you know, in turn, you know, put it into an institution, get on medication, whatever it needed to be. But we leaned on our faith to, to get through it. The second thing about this is during that journey of four months that she was in the hospital, we were asked to do several things that I don't know that any of you. Um, and I'm sorry that I I can't really relate to anybody here because there's no very few people on camera. But I see the, the statins are on. Do you guys have any kids statins? to say yes or no like this it three okay so perfect so th- let me let me let me engage with you a little bit here you don't you don't have to reply i'm just gonna you know kind of hypothetically so the three children that you have some of the things that will be really hard for you is if you found yourself going to a hospital room and one of your children was there and the doctor asked you to sign a do not resuscitate order it is it is one of the deepest things that you that you you know would have to to to, to respond to, and the and the the one the one ultimatum that we were given was if you don't authorize for the life support to be removed, then we'll have to do it for you. So a decision was being made for me, no matter what. So before I see a lot of comments coming through, I'm, I thank you guys for sharing. I know, listen, I know this isn't easy. I, I get it. It's not easy, but this is why we're going to go through this together. So, so how do we move through this is preparing ahead of time. The one of the ways that we do that, and this is part of what Denzel was telling me, uh, with trust and documents. So all the four financial documents um, that basically say exactly what your wishes are before it happens. Now, yes, I would love to help people that have already gone through it, but if if something's already happened, the only thing we could do is prepare for the for the future. Yes, health directive is one of them. There's four major ones. So we work through those, but we don't listen. An attorney knows the law. What I know is what happened, like the event that they that changed my life. I know how to navigate the financial stuff through that, especially with uh, you know, the Denzel's philosophies on on that velocity of money and keeping the money in the family and generational wealth. Okay, um, but there's one aspect that I that I think that some of some of you may not have experienced it. And and when we talk about keeping your financial house in order, here's what I think is important: life insurance. Now, I know that you have heard about life insurance from Denzel because we do use that as as the vehicle to elevate the you know the 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 infinite banking and velocity banking but there there are purposes for life insurance so my suggestion the moment that any individual becomes 18 years old automatic automatically an eight a, a million dollar term insurance because it's the cheapest most affordable the most purest form of insurance is not tied to anything else for the purpose of and i want you to if you've never heard this before for the purpose of the living benefit. And there are a lot of a lot of insurance carriers that have many different forms. We're, we're not talking insurance tonight. I'm just saying the concept, okay? So when we were in the hospital, there were 
tons and tons of expenses that we have to go through. At the end of all of it, the market value of the hospitalization was over $10 million. Okay. And, but that comes through the, you know, like health, health insurance. But in the meantime, to fill in the gap, what I realized is there's, there's a couple of things that you could do in the meantime, that, that, you know, high, uh, high value uh, term insurance that can help with the living benefits. And in her case, she was given, we were given a note from the doctor that said she was in critical condition. So we submitted, we had three policies. We submitted it to the insurance companies. But here's the thing that happened. They were only settling on about 20 to 30% of the value. So what I want you to understand is there's a very, very specific reason, very specific reason why I think that we need to understand. Guys, go on mute. There's a specific reason why I think we need to understand how that works. Because even though we were willing to give up the policies to make sure that she had all the right medical care, it didn't make too much of a financial sense in case something did happen to her. So then there's the gap there is something that's called a hospital indemnity. Again, not going to go into products or anything like that, just to give you the, like, how do we navigate through that? So hospital indemnity, it's lump sum payments the moment that somebody's hospitalized for whatever reason. The moment you're in there, you get hospitalized. The plan that I have is $2,500 the moment that I'm that I'm in there, and then $600 a day for the next 31 days, right? You guys do the math, it's over $20,000. That helps to kind of bridge the gap between that and the the um, living benefits. Of course, life insurance is, is for the benefit of, you know, our, our, our family members. But one of the things that I do realize is the statins. I'm looking at you guys, you guys work, you know, I, I think I heard your story before. I, I think I remember a little bit about who, you know, who you are, what you do, but I could just imagine like, you know, you love your family, you work for them. And if anything were to happen to both of you guys, is there a document already in a trust that spells out every little detail of your life and what would happen to your children and the wealth that you, you know, you would leave them, whether it's, it's money that's already sitting in, in some kind of asset or whether it's a life insurance that transfers to them so that they, you know, they could, you know, be taken care of. Here's what I find. Some people say, well, I have a will. Well, that's great. But your jurisdiction is you having a, a mind of the kingdom. You understand you cannot rely on probate, right? You, you're, you're basically giving up your position to the probate court. So the way you do that is you create a trust that you create and that you control and that is under your name and you keep yourself out and every keep anybody else's noses out of your business and you protect that. That's one. The second thing is if you have really young children, you would demolish them uh, mentally and everything else if you if you left them with too much wealth early on. So then there's the behavioral like there's a succession that you can set aside, you know, that let's just call that million dollars uh, for an individual and, you know, when they would get it behavioral, um, if they have any issues with, um, you know, drugs or gambling or anything like that, you can decide when and how you would control that. And then the other one is abuse, right? You know, alcohol or drug abuse or anything like that. You would control those and you control the ages that, that you know, they would get them. But why do you do that? Um, as parents, that's the legacy we're going to leave. But what I find is even though people might have a will, they might have the health directive, the, the power of attorney, the, the trust either isn't updated or more than more than 80% of the time is not funded. Funding the trust is where my specialty is at because I, I, I understood based on, uh, and, and here's, here's a side note. Kayla and I, my daughter, she's 25, she was a, a University of South Florida student. She was on her last semester. That was when she passed away. I was working on a project with her to bring this to the market. So this is really, I'm living out the legacy for Kayla for what she started, right? So there are a lot of reasons why people don't move forward with this, why they don't do this. They, they want, they want to, you know, they, they focus on the emotional part. They post focus on the, and the, in the finance part, this, you know, our service is like $1,500 is one time. And then we help with every single, you know, thing that, that, that needs to be, you know, needs to be done. But the uh, going through, going through the, the, the loss, understanding that there's a higher power and then preparing ahead of time for the, for the financial house to keep that in order. And then to be able to come out of it at the end, I can tell you 
that we had a lot of expenses, but we never had to worry about money for the last year. Um, we, you know, we, again, we, we sold our house in Champions Gate, Florida. We moved to Pennsylvania, moved back from over there, back into central Florida, you know, so life insurance does a lot more for the people that get left behind, though it could do a lot for the individual as a living benefit while, you know, the, the individuals are going through whatever they're going through. Final thought on this, and I'll give it back to you. So there is no, when people go through this grieving process, I learned to do what's called your lament. We as individuals, as, as you know, the physical individuals, we will experience pain. It's, it, it, I can't, that cannot be taken away. But the way we move through that pain and come out of it is what we put in our heart and our soul and our spirit. And I, I strongly, strongly believe that that is really the, the only thing that kept me sane. So if I could be vulnerable with you guys, there were times that I thought I was going to lose it. I mean, I thought I was going to lose my mind, you know, and uh, I just always came back to a place where God's just saying, no, I got you. The, you know, you're my son. She's my, she's, she's my daughter. You're my son. And I've got you. And so the message is, this is a kingdom talk, right? There will be a new day. There will be, that pain won't exist anymore. We'll have new bodies. We'll have a new identity in Christ. We'll have a new, uh, you know, a new creation. And I know that um, this has led me, and I, I wish I could show you my bookcase over here, probably 30 different books on the subject. My wife is the one that reads them on that we just discuss them. Um, I would rather watch the movie, right? Yeah, I know, right? Like, like Chris is like, yeah, that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, guys, I know, you know, listen, I could talk about this all day long. I just I wanted to just maybe pinpoint some of the things that this Denzel wanted me to talk about. Um, Denzel, I don't know if you want to um, uh, inter interject here. Yeah. So I would say some action steps because there's this is a community just like you, people who take action. They're like, yep. After hearing you in the first 30 seconds, two minutes of, of your position, where you're coming from, they, they know you're speaking from experience. You know, this is a, a serious situation. And it became extremely important to me because I can deliver the whole strategy to help someone go from in debt, multiple six figures to completely debt free to completely, you know, debt leveraging to infinite banking to 800 plus credit score to multiple business streams of income to tax free income to I mean, all of the things that money can produce for us that it allows us to have more impact. But one little variable that can just mess everything up is a loss. So it's like that one event can totally destroy a whole entire logical plan. And when, you know, my, my I myself, I'm not equipped. That's where I want to be able to bring someone like you in and maybe others, because I know there's another person in this community that wrote a book on grief. Um, and I wish he was here uh, because it would just be really valuable that if we can just have these conversations, it is so taboo, right? The main topics, you know, most families do not discuss money at the dinner table, marriage, having children, right? Um, you know, purity, and then life after death, and then death. And then that that stage, like dealing with that. So this community has become very accustomed to the money game. We're we're open. We talk money. There's people who have given me their numbers in front of a crowd of 30, 40 people. So we're we're open when it comes to that. But something like a loss, right? Losing a child, losing a spouse, losing a, a close family member can really just derail someone's whole plan. And I think the the thing that really frustrates me is where I feel so like useless because here I am doing all this stuff and I'll have a client go through something, but they go through it alone. And then they hit me up two years later, one year later, year and a half later. And I'm picking up pieces at this point. I'm like, oh my God. All right. You know, well, do you remember this? And, and, and okay. okay you know, so I'm like, all right, here is the proactive strategies. It's the discussion, right? We're opening the conversation. That's what we're doing here. I want to be able to provide action steps for someone like, you know, someone in here to take advantage of working with you. You know, if you got links, okay, you already dropped your link, your Calendly. Someone is a part of the how to become a financial coach without certifications. Yeah, you Calendly set up. I love it. 
so that very discreetly, quietly, anyone that is going through this, been through it, or maybe you have not been through it, but you want to prepare for it. Because I can guarantee you, you're going to die and everybody in this room is going to die. We're all going at some point. Can't can't cheat it. Can't pass it. It is something we all are going to have to experience it. And then we're going to be on the end of it. Right. And then someone we love is going to experience that. So how do we have these conversations? How do we get through it? That is part of what the department inside of Finance Geek Ministry, Mr. Ramos is running that here. And he is someone that I trust that I would go to to help me with that type of situation if I have ever needed to go through it, right? At some point in time, if I, if it comes about, you know, randomly, like what would happen if I lose someone? Would I, would you guys stop hearing me for six months, a year? And you're like, Denzel's not posting any content anymore. What the heck happened? He's not responding to my emails. I can't book a call with him. He's not showing up. Like those are the things that go through my mind. It's like, it's not only me that gets affected. If I lose someone, we're talking a thousand plus people in this community that gets affected with their situations if I don't know how to get through this, right? Um, and that may be some of you in here with businesses that have employees that have to pay people, right? Or you're raising children. I mean, we, we have to be able to get through it, overcome it, increase, grow from that event and, and be able to do it like... How do, how do I say? I don't even know how to put the words together, right? But this is this is you, right? So any closing remarks, action steps that you would want someone in here to take if they have gone through it or yeah, in the process of it right now, maybe someone is, yeah. is, is on hospice or you know they're in the hospital or they're prepping for it. Maybe they have parents that are older and they know they're like getting close to that time. Mm -hmm. uh, got to be able to have these conversations, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, this is a, this is a lot like running your numbers when, when we do any of the, right. the work with you. So it's, it's, it's running the numbers based on what you have. And, and, and what I mean is who, who's depending on you? Number one. Uh, second is, you know, what, with all the work that you've done and all the fruit that you've gained and everything that you'll harvest, who do you want to be the, the beneficiary of all of that? Um, and, and then, uh, you know, having a list of that, having having a process, I actually have a guide to help couples talk about this, because one of the one of the hardest things to do is to get in front of a couple and say, hey, you know, if you had three kids, something would happen to you. What like, you know, this one's pulling over here. The other one's pulling over there. No, my sister, no, my dad, you know, and so they can have that conversation outside of the consultation. But it's a guide to kind of help them through it. Um, the best time to prepare is when nothing's happened. Right. I mean, when is the best time to buy life insurance when you're healthy and young? Right. Uh, when is the best time to uh, buy car insurance when you're, you know, a decent age, a safe driver, and you don't have all these risks, right, that are attached to you. So it's kind of the same idea. Think about how to, how to eliminate the, the risk, transfer the risk of making these decisions, um, being in a hospital room, getting that phone call at three o'clock in the morning, all of those things have them ahead of time. That's the practical thing that you can do. Um, in the link, it's just in the beginning, we, we own, yes, blended families. Absolutely. Oh, we'll go through all of that. I didn't want to get into the presentation, you know, but blended families, that's living in different States. You know, it's, it, it listen now I have so much content around all of that, but it really is the, the first, the first call is 15 minutes. And I do it for very, very particular. Um, it is just a, I want to get to know a little bit of who you are and I want to see your intentions. Um, I don't call people tire kickers, but I do call them. You want to get all this information and you're really not going to move on anything, but I want to know your motivation. Your motivation is once you tell me how much you care about your family, then I know that this is important to you, right? So that Calendly link will, will be able to serve that. The second thing is, um, you know, there's a lot of biblical stuff that we can go through. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy, you know, sharing that, you know, with people. And if anybody is, is struggling with these topics, sometimes just having a conversation and, you know, I want to hear your story and what has happened, what, what what's happened to me has helped me is the more I tell the story, the more I actually feel like I'm living out her legacy. She's never going to be forgotten. She will never be forgotten because I'm going to keep talking about her. What I find is some some parents that I've had conversations with, uh, not necessarily in this in this community, um, they just kind of bottle it up, and you know, and then so there's all these issues that go on, mental issues, emotional issues, relationship issues, things like that, 
because they never dealt with it. Now, I am not a a psychiatrist or psychologist. I'm not, I don't have any of those licenses. Here's what I know, what what happened to me, my personal story. That's, That's the part that I can share with you. And one thing that I have that's huge is my faith. I'm willing to share that with you. If those things resonate with you and you'd like to have a conversation with me about those things, that's what we're here. Thank you. Appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And-